Psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, affects your senses. I'm Rachel Yehuda, and I study psychedelics in the context of mental health treatments like PTSD. It's really important to emphasize that this research is very new. There's not a lot of information from controlled studies about what actually happens to our senses when we ingest psilocybin. But we do know that psilocybin definitely affects your perception. Let's talk about visual perception. Well, after you've ingested psilocybin, you may notice that what you're seeing is a little different than what you normally see. A lot of people believe that they're going to hallucinate if they take a drug like psilocybin. But these are not classic hallucinations. Some people do have fractiles, which means that regular images form geometric shapes, or they may see colors in a very profound manner, or they might sense things that they know aren't there. Even if they're having visual perceptions, they kind of know that. And that's why people will say things like, hey man, I'm tripping," or I'm tripping balls. Well, we know a lot about how the eye is able to detect something in the environment and transmit an image back into your brain. So we do not think that psilocybin affects that process, that camera, if you will. Here you see the eye taking a picture of an apple, kind of figuring out what it is. Your brain is going to interpret to you that this is an apple. But when you're under the influence of something like psilocybin, you may really feel that you're seeing the apple in a different way and for the first time, and you're really marveling a lot at the intricacies that are involved in this apple. Maybe the smoothness of the skin, the shading, the fact that it's not just one color green here. There's a light green and a dark green, and it's really very beautiful. And you might also have some gratitude for living in a world where apples just grow on trees and are available to you. And then you might even think to yourself, how am I related to this apple? Your visual perception is happening over here a little bit, the optic nerve um, going back to your brain, but your prefrontal cortex is really interpreting what is going on. And it's giving you more of the feeling of pondering the apple after your visual system tells you that indeed it is an apple. So eye shades are often used in clinical trials to encourage people to go inward, to kind of find what's there, to kind of see where your mind would, will take you when your mind can go a little further than it usually would go. In that context, it's very hard to say that you're seeing something with your visual system with psychedelics when you're putting on eye shades. When we dream, for example, we think we see things. The sense you have when you're dreaming is more a combination of a story or an understanding, perhaps an image, but it's certainly mediated by different parts of the brain than the visual system. So psychedelics may engage those parts of the brain. We don't know that for sure yet, and it's a very exciting time for us because we can study this now well, let's talk about how psilocybin affects your auditory perception. So a lot of people report that when they listen to music while taking psilocybin, that their experience is greatly enhanced. The idea here is that you're hearing the music in a way where it has deeper resonance, deeper tones. You're appreciating more how the music is making you feel. Music is a big part of the therapeutic use of psilocybin for mental health conditions. There have been playlists that have been curated to assist a psychedelic experience with psilocybin. And so it isn't that your hearing is affected per se, but that again, your whole experience of hearing becomes heightened and more profound. Most studies do use music as part of the experience. Um, that's certainly true in clinical trials. A lot of times the music is discussed in advance. Generally, the, the music is really evocative. Um, people refer to it sometimes as shamanic music. It generally does not have words, maybe chants, but it's really designed to encourage an internal process, maybe breathing in a certain way or emptying your mind or or prolonging um, the kinds of images that you might see in your mind's eye. So if you take psychedelics like psilocybin out in nature, you know, you're not necessarily hearing music, but you might hear the music of the world. You might sense the birds chirping. You might become very aware of that or how the trees rustle. I mean, the world really does have a soundtrack to it. 
you might focus more on those sounds and really see something in them or take that experience. Many people report as really feeling connected and one with those kinds of sensory experiences. Synesthesia is the experience of having your senses cross over. You would hear colors or you would see music. What you're really seeing when you see music is that you're sensing that the sound has a visual component to it. You might hear boom and then you see some light. So in a way it's very similar to when you experience fireworks. Did you go and see fireworks or did you go and hear them? You did both because they were both part of this multimodal sensory experiences. And yeah, the lights would have been great, the sounds would have been great, but the lights and sound are what makes this experience magical. One of the most common effects of psilocybin, particularly at high doses, is your sense of self, sense of self in relation to your ego. A heroic dose is a dose that really allows your ego to dissolve and allows you to kind of get outside of your natural Self, understanding that you can't predict what you're going to see, um, and that from a physiologic perspective, um, you will be safe, particularly if you're with someone, um, but that it can be dark. I mean, the risk of taking a drug like psilocybin is you might see something that you don't want to see or that you're not ready to see, or you might have an experience that's more difficult than you bargained for. It's just an experience that is really um, not easy to predict for any given person. What is bound to happen, though, is that you'll remember what you saw. And then there's a process called integration, where um, you're encouraged to talk about what you've seen with a facilitator, with a therapist, with someone else. There's a phenomena called ego dissolution that is associated with psychedelics, especially psilocybin. That really means that you kind of let yourself or aspects of yourself dissolve into the background so that you can examine things that are not your ego. You've taken the psilocybin and within maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, you start to feel either that your soul is lifting up or your body is dissolving or you're having trouble remembering who, maybe your name or maybe why you're here or that you're here. So sometimes with psychedelics, especially psilocybin, people have what is called a noetic experience. And a noetic experience is the sense that you have learned something powerful, that you now know something as a truth. Something about yourself maybe or something about the world. Maybe it is, I deserve to be here or maybe there is God any number of things. A lot of people think that a noetic experience is a revelation and therefore must be true. That's not necessarily the case. The fact that you know something strongly doesn't necessarily make it true. We have to be really careful about that distinction. But there's this profound sense of a truth that belongs to you. And when you encounter it, you recognize it as something that belongs to you. And this could be very, very powerful. Examples would be the only important thing is love. I think that when you um, try to spend too much time thinking about what is happening for those six to eight hours of somebody actively taking the drug, you miss the larger point of why psychedelics are being looked at in the context of mental health conditions like addictions and trauma and depression. They're being used as an assist. They're being used to facilitate an insight. What's critical isn't only what's happening while you're taking the medicine, but what happens down the road. So clearly, the process of psychotherapy, the process of integration, the process of thinking about what you're thinking about while you're on the psychedelic also has a biology and also has a neurochemistry. And that's what we're investigating in our center in the context of doing these clinical trials with psychedelics. That maybe you won't have those symptoms anymore. So we're at a moment where the mental health crisis in this country and, and all over the world has never been more obvious. And the need for new therapies has never been more acute. So why not have another look at this? So that's how psilocybin affects your perception.